Um, how many of you are actively pursuing uh, team building in some way? Like I have at least hired a buyer agent or I have a, an assistant or there is a plan for recruiting. Okay, cool. So version 1.0 at least is sort of being pushed out the door. Well, when we scale teams, we get really focused on these paid lead sources, which we need because that's the scalable thing, right? But, you know, how many of you have dumped a few thousand dollars into Google AdWords or Zillow or Facebook leads or whatever? And sure, the leads come in, but like they convert at a low rate. And then also like it takes forever to convert some of these leads. Has anybody experienced any of this? Kevin has, Kevin's hand shot up in the air. Kevin's in Littleton, Colorado. So you know the pain there. Um, do you know that the average Google AdWords lead takes nine to 12 months to close? That's what the data shows us. If you start spending money on Google AdWords right now, you will have closings in 60 or 90 days, but it's just such a minimal uh, minority of, of the leads that come in, they can close that quickly. And one of the reasons is that if you think about the consumer intent, they're like getting on Google and you know, kind of Googling how to buy a house in, in Austin, but they still are under a lease. They're probably motivated to do this. One of the reasons is because their rent just went, went way up. They're interested in talking to you. They're interested in figuring out this process, but they're basically stuck and can't do anything for the better part of a year. Now, when we, and also we have to spend the next nine months convincing and reconvincing them that they should trust us and that we should be their guy or their gal to, to put this home run over the fence. And sometimes what happens is we invest in these leads at the exclusion of the stuff that worked for us when we were baby agents and were broke and had to, you know, squeeze out one deal at a time, you know, kind of in a very scrappy uh, uh, way. So what we want to do today is I want to leverage the power of the um, genius that we have on this call. We have a lot of people who've already graduated from CEO Masterclass. We have a lot of folks who've read our books and have contributed these amazing ideas via email. You know, all, uh, all the folks that we've gotten to engage with, thank you. We're going to highlight these three teams that are uh, joining us today. One's in Houston, one's in South Carolina, one is in, um, gosh, I'm spacing, Sacramento. And we're going to talk to these guys about what are the things that they do consistently to, to create pipeline of high converting free leads and then what is as a second question what's the break in case of emergency tactic or two that they use that's really ninja or unconventional that answers the question oh my gosh i got nothing under contract for next month how do i eke out another couple of deals and do it very very quickly so how many of you would like to add another couple of transactions for may yeah hands in the air okay cool you don't have to reinvent the wheel. I actually have people who are walking through the building raising their hand because they just overheard that question. <laughs> I'll get to you later. Okay, so let's go to our uh, screen share. Adele, I think you've made me the co-host. That's helpful. Thank you much. Okay, cool. So I, there's a certain degree of housekeeping that we have to do because a lot of you guys um, are new to us. And by the way, if this is the first time we've gotten to interact, welcome and thank you. We're super excited to meet you. Uh, and we want to talk to you later. So let's go to our, our slides here. We're going to kind of introduce who the heck we are. That's probably a good place to start and why you should care about what we have to say. So let me just like do the bottom line up front. Chris Waters and I, who's going to be joining the call here in a little while to say hi, um, he and I built a team model here in Austin, Texas that we then you know, copied and pasted into all these other markets through a couple of different expansion models. And that team here in Austin creates over $29,000 a day in revenue. That's the 2021 numbers and we're already blowing that out of the water for 2022. So literally $29,000 come into the house every single day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. So maybe you won't produce that coming out the gate, but I'm gonna show you how to do it. Today, we're gonna to peel back the curtain on another part of the way that we create those results. So in an hour, we're going to try to give you guys as much uh, actionable tactical stuff that you can take and install into your own businesses so that you can create similar results to us. So who are we? Um, Chris and I, you know, we know how to do one thing. I sent out an email the other day <clears throat> and I said, you know, we're terrible spellers. 
we both suck at basketball. Like we're awful, like super unathletic, but we know how to do one thing better than anybody else in the country. And that is how to build high performance teams via a high profitability model. So we basically are one trick ponies, but if this is the thing that you want to learn how to do, uh, we're your boys, okay? So let me tell you what I think your target should be. I think your target should be to build a, a high profitable team that does 500 transactions a year, and I want you to build it in three to five years. I want you to create a result that is this. I want you to have the option of either selling this team for cash, and there are buyers who will pay you basically a 1.5 times revenue multiple. So like, you know, our team here in Austin, I think we did 11 million last year. You know, we ha would have no problem getting multiple offers for, you know, between 15 and 20 million right now. Once you hit another like tier of $30 million in revenue, then the multiple goes up to three, but what's the conversation for another day, champagne problems. But, you know, you can, you can liquidate this business, have that liquidity event, and basically say, see you later. And what they would do, the buyer in this contract, is they would make you stay around for about two years. Year one is to teach all their players how to execute on the thing. Year two is basically where you become a hood ornament and just sort of slap backs and kiss babies. You know, they trot you out to wave and, you know, lead a meeting or two. And then you basically just get paid to go sunset, to go, to go, go to pasture with all of your cash. That's option number one. Option number two is that in this process of home growing leaders who you show how to uh, you know, run each one of these impact zones in the business, the buyer team, the listing team, the operation side, marketing and lead generation. After home growing, most of those leaders, occasionally you'll have to cut a check and get one from a, a different industry or poach somebody from another team or what have you to fill a gap. We really try to home grow everybody. That usually works better. But once you have all of these leaders installed, you don't have to sell. What you can do is then just back out and let these leaders run the business for you. So Chris opened the company in 2010. In 2011, he comes to me and says, hey, I hate what I've built. Um, it's just a traditional brokerage. I threw some leads at these agents. They're not closing them. I'm going to fire everybody. And you're going to be the team lead as I rebuild it into this high profitable team model. And of course, like, you know, I'm a high S personality. Where my high S is at? Raise your hand. Anybody? Whoop, whoop. No, it's a room full of D's. I'm just like left out there on my own. What do high S's hate? What do you know about S's? Somebody tell me, what do we hate? Change. We hate change. Valerie's my S homie. Yeah, she gets it. Don't move my salt shaker much less tell me that I'm going to be somebody's leader, right? And I'm thinking, oh, goodness, I couldn't lead my way out of a paper bag. Are you kidding me? So, like, you, you take these people and you grow them into folks who can take these giant swaths of the business off of you, yeah? And then you get to step back and, and do whatever pieces of the business you really like, or you get to step away from the whole thing. I've only had one person in CEO Masterclass who told me, hey, I'm building this so that I can go to the beach and never touch real estate again, never work again. Usually when I have someone who is a team builder, they have parts of the business that they want to retain, lead generation, marketing strategy, the fun stuff, right? Um, or they have a next like thing that they're trying to get to. Very, very few of you guys are trying to put your feet up on a beach and never work again. It's an option, but what this does, this creates choices for you, yeah? Cash out or create the cash cow and then do whatever you want to with that time that you've reclaimed. Some of you guys, I could not pry listing appointments out of your cold, dead hand. And I am fully aware of that. Um, your hunters, you want to hunt. That's cool. But I want you to have the option to say no to anything. Wouldn't that be cool? Say no to any client, say no to any task, say no to any project, offload it to someone else, or just, you know, decline it. Okay. So um, what started with us, Chris and I, ended up growing much larger. We went through a corporate expansion phase, went into Amarillo, San Antonio, kind of worked everything out. Then we boxed up our systems and said, hey, anybody who wants to come and basically like, you know, use these systems, install them into your business, let's talk. So now we have like, I don't know, 15, 18 teams, I guess 18 teams total, 15 of which are under the, the uh, franchise model. 
Um, you'll get to hear about some of those stories today. There might be one or two of those people in the call that you'd be able to connect with as well. If you ever want to talk to those folks, just let us know. Adele will hook you up. So this all like sort of started whenever we wrote a book. We knew that we had something special. We had gone into these two expansion markets and created a lot of results there. But then we go to, to create this national and international product and we say, okay, nobody knows who we are outside of this you know, central Texas area. So we wrote this book a few years ago. And um, if you haven't read the book already, Adele's gonna post a link in the chat box so that you can get that book for free. You just pay the shipping and handling on it, but this is the manual that basically tells you how to create this thing, get it off the ground. And it chronicles the first three years of our success. So how do Chris and I fit together? Well, Chris, anybody, any Star Trek fans in the room? And it, some of y'all have heard this analogy, Valerie, I didn't know that. Okay, we'll talk later. Yeah, I didn't know. We're like the same person. Usually I have a room full of Star Wars people. It's kind of weird. But you know, at least you know enough about Captain Kirk and Mr. Spock to know how those guys fit together. What did Captain Kirk do? He was like always getting every, everybody into trouble, right? Like he would, he would push the envelope and put the ship at risk and everybody was either going to die or like hit big and it was going to be a huge success. And of course he always won, made everybody else nervous on the way. That's Chris Waters. I am the other guy. I am the guy who knows how everything actually runs, fits together and can tell you how to repeat this in your market. So th that's kind of our like running dynamic there. Here we go. So a little bit more about me, since a lot of people know who Chris is and kind of more about his story. Back in the 2000s, I was a struggling agent through the recession, met Chris, uh, became a sales agent for him, just started closing a bunch of like $150,000 deals through Boomtown, you know, Google PPC leads. I told you the story about how we burned down the team and then I created the, I became the first team lead that involved creating the first buyer agent training program. I sort of got to define the uh, buyer agent team lead role and then promoted to director of sales, director of ops. And then I was the president for, I guess, three or four years. And then finally gave all of those roles away to people whom I had homegrown within the organization, started off as buyer agents, elevated to team leaders, elevated to coordinators, et cetera, who were able to fill those roles in a way that was much more specialized and, and leaned into their God-given talents and abilities and gifts and all that stuff. So then I go to write the book, and took a lot of, of information out of Chris's head and then put that into sort of a coherent, coherent cohesive theory. And that's the book that, that uh, we call the Million Dollar Real Estate Team. My job now is to help our franchise partners execute on the model. My big why are these guys right here. And, and you know everything that I do has them in mind. So I get up in the morning helping our franchisees build big things so that they can deliver to their big why. And then the reason behind that are these three little boogers right here. So <clears throat> gut check, you're not gonna come out of the gate making $29,000 a day, not instantly. So if that is you know, your expectation, go ahead and drop off the call. If you don't wanna put in the work, if you don't wanna like get beat up a little bit on the way, like that is uh, uh, not reasonable and you should probably, we should probably part ways. But if you have the expectation that you want to build something that one day you can walk away from and you know for the next three years you're going to work your ass off to build it like you're my guy i can teach you how to do this okay <clears throat> so uh you're going to understand a lot more about how this is done though once we're over and today you know we're going to dial in on that lead generation thing really quick you know you're going to hear me make a distinction over and over again in the book and our coaching programs etc I, I club you guys over the head with this because I think it's so important. When you were a baby agent and you went to your big box brokerage, you were sold what I'm going to tell you is a giant lie. And that giant lie is that as an agent, you own your own business. Did anybody hear that in your training program? You own your own real estate business. No, you don't. You own a job. You own a practice if it goes well. And it might be a very profitable practice, but you're kind of like, you know, Back in my hometown in the 80s, there was a doctor. And when the doctor retired, like there was no more doctor, right? Because he was the business. Like what he had was a successful practice that everyone depended on. What I wanna teach you guys how to build is something different, an actual business asset that you could sell for cash. That's the first filter. If you're, if you're questioning why, um, 
whether you have a business or not, maybe you're offended by, uh, by what I just shared with you. Let me ask you to put your operation through these two filters. Number one, could you sell it for cash today, teach somebody how to run it, and then walk away in a few months? Number two, and this is the scratch on the record. If, God forbid, something happened to you tomorrow, there's a pretty bus that you could get hit by. Does your operation continue to provide for your big wine, for the people whom you've left behind, and do so in a way that is predictable, reliable, and uninterrupted? The answer is yes. Chris and I have a policy that we can't be on the same plane. Uh, because, you know, we're important to the organization, but even if something were to happen to us, there are immediately people who would rush in to fill this gap and our listing appointments would hold for the next day. We would continue to market. We would continue to budget. We have people for that. And his wife and kids are taken care of and my family's taken care of as well. If you can't say the same based on your business, it's not a business, it's a practice. So I want to help you guys kind of have that realization today. What's, what are our goals? So I want you guys to, if you have version 1.0 of your team out the door, let's make it better today. Even if it's just on this little corner of lead generation. If you don't have a team yet, then we're gonna talk to you about how to build it the right way. So you don't have this experience that so many people on this call have had, which is I had you know, version 1.0 of the team out the door. I built it all wrong. I burned it down. I decided that team building sucked or I sucked. Maybe I'm a bad leader, blah, blah, blah. And actually none of that is true. It's just a matter of I wasn't following the right plan. So if you stay to the end, we got some free stuff for you that Adele is going to hook uh, you up with. Everybody met Adele. Is she not like amazing? Hmm. If you oh, haven't stop. connected with Adele, <laughs> she pays me to say that. Um, <laughs> if you haven't met Adele, I'm going to highly encourage you to connect with her because she is a wealth of information and she's very liberal with her time. She's very generous with her time and will spend it with you on the phone, kind of running ideas with you about recruiting. By the way, she was a badass corporate recruiter. Um, for who? Me. She was killer. She was so good that I poached her on the franchise side uh, and the, uh, the coaching side, rather. So if you have questions about how to get agents to come work for you, she's your girl. So here's the thing we're going to share today. Let's talk about leads, leads, leads. We're going to talk about how to create high quality slam dunk referral leads in ways that, are, that you've probably never thought of before. Everybody's got their couple of things that they do to sort of bake their sphere and all that stuff. But we're going to teach you how to amp that up. And we're going to source this from the hive mind here. We're going to go to our team owners, and then we're going to go to you guys so that you all can contribute some stuff live on the call as well. We've never done this before. Kind of a, a crowdsource mastermind thing. We're going to ans answer two questions. The long-term play, what are the creative, cool ways that I can create these high converting referral slam dunk leads? And then also, Brad, how do I get two more deals for next month? We're going to ask the same people these two questions, and they're going to tell you some of their best stuff. And some of it is wacky. <laughs> some of it is like jaw droppingly. I can't believe you did. I saw you do that on Facebook. You have to come on my webinar and share this stuff with me. So I'm going to introduce you to a couple of folks here in just a minute. The um, people that we have have all been through our CEO masterclass and have graduated from that class and have already created results on the team building front. I want to introduce you to someone now. This is Aisha Shelton. Everybody say hi to Aisha. Where is Aisha? There we go. I'm gonna ask you to unmute. We're gonna to try to pin your video spotlight for everyone. Uh -oh. And then we're gonna kind of jump in and out of some screen share stuff. So Aisha was kind enough to send uh, me some things, some ideas to kind of uh, go over. And we created some slides for you, Aisha. But everybody who's watching live or on the recording, I want you to take a screenshot of this or write this information down because she operates in Houston, Texas, and she loves referrals. And she creates a lot of five-star experiences for your referrals. Aisha, you work pretty much the whole city, the, the metro at large. You can take care of just about anybody. Cool. Yeah. A lot of people moving to Houston too. So uh, make sure that you connect with Aisha if you have a client who's thinking about coming down this way. So Aisha, uh, it would be helpful if I had put the slide on the screen. There we go. There she is. Make sure you freeze frame that or write that information down. Uh, while we've got that on the screen for just a minute so people can copy down your number, what is, actually tell me who is Aisha Shelton? 
Um, so team lead of the Aisha Shelton team here in Houston, Texas, um, and also just so happen to be co-owner of Park Street Homes, which is a residential real estate development company with my husband. Um, just happen to be co-owner of a development company. Happen to be, <laughs> um, but my my main job is is real estate sales and the team lead of this of this team. Okay, so you and I had the benefit of spending a day together a few months ago, and I got to really look inside of your business. And one of the things that was very impressive to me is, you know, I've met in my 12 years doing this, 11 years leading the team, I think I have met maybe five true connectors, like actual connector uh, uh, profiles who, you know, I can drop you into a room and by 30 minutes from now, you will know everyone and you have made sure that other people know each other as well. I literally have, it can count on, on one hand how many people I've met like that. So when we talked about some of your reliable uh, tried and true tactics as far as creating a pipeline of slam dunk referrals, you know, naturally it was all about investing in people and connecting with people. Um, you had a really interesting take, which was organizations. Can we just like dive right in? You've built a steady referral stream based on identifying impactful organizations and people. What does that mean? Yeah, so um, in real estate, we like to spend a lot of time with other people in real estate, right? In real estate-based organizations and with other real estate agents. Um, and what I've found is that when I intentionally, um, yet genuinely, join organizations with the intent of being the real estate expert in that space, um, the leads that I get are high quality. Um, we have a dentist. When someone says like, oh, who's your dentist? You don't say, oh, I go to several dentists. Or who's your chiropractor? I have several chiropractors. You want to be the preferred uh, real estate agent. And when someone says, who's your real estate agent? Like, oh, Aisha. Or am I look if you're looking for a real estate agent in Houston, I know the perfect person. It's not like, oh, I know five real estate agents. We obviously know lots of real estate agents. There are plenty of us out here. Um, but what I've done is intentionally join organizations that are in the target market that I'm interested in um, and they're genuine relationships, but there aren't a lot of realtors that are in that space. So for example, and this isn't my story, but a soccer mom, um, if, I'm, if my kid is in soccer, then I'm the real estate soccer mom. And I'm talking to the other moms about the values of their home or how crazy the market is or what that means for people, you know, what that means for people who own houses now and what their options are. So I just become the expert in the spaces, but I am very intentional about what those organizations are. So let's talk about that because you have kind of an analytic bend on like, hey, which organization should I be spending my time with? Obviously, the, there's, you know, the, the angle of it needs to be something that I'm passionate about. Otherwise, it's not going to be any fun. And that doesn't scratch the giving itch that you've got as well. But right. when you look at all of these different causes or organizations, how do you pick the one or the two that actually makes sense from a business perspective? Um... It's the quality of the network. Will it, what, what are the people that are in that organization, what their network looks like and what, what my network looks like as well, right? So I'm also a resource to them outside of real estate. Um, like you said, being a connector. But I think that I really have to point out that every organization that I'm in, I'm passionate about, but also I'm extremely intentional about as well. Yeah. You know, I like fell completely backwards into a volunteer gig, like maybe 10 or 12 years ago. And I was just looking for somewhere to volunteer that, you know, you could get a little bit more involved than like filing at their office or whatever. And I ended up um, uh, volunteering at two different organizations. One of them is called CASA. Has anybody ever heard of CASA before? C-A-S-A? -A? It's, it's crazy. So basically, um, in CPS cases where kids are removed from their home because it's, you know, there's a question about the safety or whatever. In most states, those um, uh, like caseworkers are so crazy overloaded and not able to staff the cases in the way that they really want to, that literally volunteers from the community go through about 40 hours of training, and then they just stick you into these court cases, and you're basically serving as a caseworker. And 
in that organization, I don't know how many people I connected with that because the environment was one where we were all there for the kids and we were all moving in the same direction. The, the thing that was magic about the organization is that you walk in on this giant mountain of trust. Like they already believe every word that comes out of your mouth because you are one of them, you know, and you guys are all moving in the same direction. What's uh, so I don't know how many referrals I did from that back in the day. And then of course those turn into more deals and those people refer more deals and it, it snowballs. What's a good example of a home run that you hit whenever you joined an organization and then got referrals from that channel? Let's see. Um, the, the best opportunity is when there are social opportunities and uh, networking opportunities. And so we're kind of all standing around and discussing which organizations we were a part of or we were representatives of. And this particular organization is called Impact 100 Houston. It's an international organization. And the goal is for us to get 100 women to donate $1,000. And we make a $100,000 donation to a nonprofit unrestricted fund. So you can use them however your organization needs them. Um, and so people who are attracted to this cause, one, $1,000 is nothing to shake a stick at when right. you make this commitment. But people who are attracted to this cause um, are also women who are high achievers and you know don't have a lot of time but they have the ability to give back philanthropically um and so we're standing around and we're having a conversation about which organizations we were affiliated with um and someone i mentioned i was in real estate and one lady said oh are you i have a condo that i need to sell and i mean she just told me what her issues were i gave her a basic response to solve it and said let's dive a little deeper give me the address and let me check it out um, and I got my first listing and I just met her. Um, she was impressed by my market knowledge and I didn't have to win her over. She didn't interview right. other real estate agents. It was just a conversation. I gave her what she needed and I got a, a lead, a listing lead. That's so good. And you know, here's what do y'all hear in there that was genius? Number one, I chose this organization because I was passionate about it. It was great. And also let's be real the people who are also attracted to this organization are people who probably live in some pretty nice houses and condos. Yes. <laughs> and how, <laughs> now think about this. If you guys had gone to Google or Facebook or even like what we do on the radio and TV and stuff, and you tried to pay your way into the woman with the condos, you know, consciousness, right? And, and by her trust, you couldn't have done it, or it would have taken you years to do that, and hundreds of thousands of dollars, possibly, you know, on some major campaigns. And Aisha walked in there on her first meeting, and because the woman understood her to be one of us, and on the same page, automatically, she basically, you know, was cut, she had this umbrella of credibility from just being involved in the organization. That's killer. And okay. let's be clear, I asked, yeah. I asked for the sale too. So I said, give me your address. Let me send you a market analysis. I don't just leave it out there. Yep. Um, I am asking for the information that I need to continue this conversation outside of this particular event. I would imagine that right now about 20 to 50% of our membership here is saying, that's the part that makes me a little, that, that I don't quite know how to navigate. I don't know how to transition from I just met you, we're great, you know, we're here for the same thing to like, give me the business. What, what would you advise one of your agents who was having that struggle? I'm choking at the ask. How do I get over that? Keep choking until you perfect <laughs> it. That's all I got. You just keep doing <laughs> it do, yeah. and it'll be awkward and you'll learn every time you do it, you'll learn something different and you'll do it better each time you do it. And it's really just one of those things where you just have to do it until you get it right. And then it becomes second nature. Cool, man. That's awesome. I'm going to hot seat you real quick on uh, the, my second question, which is whenever you kind of look at your production and you look at, oh no. Um, nothing's coming in for next month. I got to go eke out a couple of deals really quickly. What is your go-to tactic or two when we need to pull out some quick closes? What's the well that you would tell these folks to go to? I am looking at my top 50 or my sphere and running the numbers on their homes and just sending, making phone calls 
to say, hey, I've been doing some research in your neighborhood and this is how much you can get for your house. And it's a crazy market. Would you like to take advantage of it? Let's talk about what your options are. But I am, I am working my database and uh -huh. giving that information directly, phone calls. So I feel like the thing that's kind of unconventional there is the approach of, I'm not asking you, you know, are you guys interested in moving or interested in finding out what your home is worth? It is assumptive. I, I bet almost nobody on the call does that. I've been doing, did y'all catch that again? Say that again. I've been doing some research. Pick it up from there. I've been, I've been doing some research about home sales in your area, and this is how much your home is worth. And it's, it really is a, it's not an email because that's easy to pass up. It's a phone call and I'm get, I'm sending you this information. And then hopefully, especially in this market, these numbers pique your interest and we can start the conversation. How many of those phone calls and um, like market snapshots that you send out, how many of those do you have to do before you get a solid lead, uh, either them yeah. or a referral? That's probably like a 12 or 15. So not so bad. One. No. I mean, 12, 15 minute conversations, you know, because you're going to get into the how you doing and how are the kids and all that stuff. If you guys, if let's work that out. Let's just say that each one of those conversations is 15 minutes. Somebody who's way smarter than I am. What's 15 times 12? Is that 180? Not me. Ish. <laughs> yeah, I'm a, I'm a journalism major. Are you kidding? Okay. I think that's 180. So 180 minutes divided by, so is that three hours? Yeah, that's right. So three hours and then we'll get a deal, right? So what's a, what's a deal? What's a listing worth to you in Houston right now on average? What would your GCI be? About 350 is the price okay. point of the house. Yeah. Okay. And would you, let's say you only get one side of the deal. Would that be a 3% to you, a 4% to you, two and a half to you? How's that working right now? That's a 3%. Okay. So 350 times 3%, is that 10.5? Yeah. Okay. Divided by the three hours. So we just discovered that Aisha makes about 3,500 bucks an hour with her mouth, right? All she got to do is pick up the people who already know and, and, and trust her, but use this tactic of, I'm going to be assumptive. You know, my tip of the spear here is I've done the research. I'm sending you this. It's not the, 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 uh, the thing that most of us do, which is Let's talk about the kids for 20 minutes and then let's do a real weak ask at the end. This is awesome. Aisha, everybody give it up for Aisha. This is amazing. Uh, don't forget, she's uh, in Houston, Texas. Happy to handle your referrals. And uh, if you got any questions about the Houston market or anybody who wants to move there, she's your girl. Okay, thanks, Aisha. All right, so cool. Let's go to our next team builder or team builders. I want to introduce you guys to a couple of folks. Um, these two people, I just had the pleasure of meeting with my office, meeting with in our office. Was that yesterday, Johnny, Valerie? Was yeah, that yesterday? That was yesterday. <laughs> that was yesterday. Or was that two days ago? That was two days ago. Yeah. 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 Okay. I get lost. I got three kids. Oh, we we flew back five. yesterday. We flew back. Right, right, right. right. Yeah. <laughs> and so uh, it's, what's funny is we booked them on this webinar before we actually books the the them to come out so it just so happened it all uh happened in one week so let's go to johnny and valerie um tell us who johnny and valerie are and where do you practice i'm gonna do it gorgeous yeah i'll go for it um chris waters never calls me gorgeous so um i gotta write that into the new contract okay but go ahead <laughs> all right uh, who's yeah, johnny so and valerie we uh, we're operating in the Sacramento market, the, the greater Sacramento area. So there's lots of different cities there, but we've been um, doing real estate together since about 2015. So, yeah, we're, cool. we're finally building out a team and uh, bringing some agents into our sphere. So. So what's your big why right now? I think I met him a couple of days ago. Yeah, you did. Yes, we just had a baby. And um, yeah, just really trying to get some, some more freedom to be able to spend some more time with that little guy. So cool. That's awesome. All right. So uh, talk to me about when you guys had, I asked you for ideas about like, Hey, what's your tried and true tactics for creating that pipeline of uh, cheap and easy referral deals. And y'all had some like wildly varying stuff. Like 
totally different uh, tactics. Let's talk, number one was CMA day. This is Ninja is what, what Johnny wrote. Johnny, talk, why don't you take this one? What's CMA day? I'll let Valor do this one, but this is a CMA day, very similar to what, um, man, Aisha was, Aisha was talking about, but kick it off, Gurley, you do it a little bit different. Yeah, so I mean, same general idea, just going into the database and finding people. Um, I usually start with buyers that I've sold houses to in the last couple of years and just running a, a CMA for them. I'll email it over, but then immediately call, like Aisha said, you know, you have to get them on the phone, say, hey, I just sent you this email. You know, I was, I was curious what your house was worth, thought maybe you would be interested as well. And um, I think it, I, the numbers, this most recent time that I've done it, uh, it was about 14 and then got one listing appointment. So yeah. very similar to what we said with Aisha. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I saw a lot of people writing when you said I was curious and mm -hmm. I thought you might be too, because that feels very like non salesy, right? Yeah, I was I, curious I about that personal touch to it. So yeah, this is great. Okay, cool. So let me ask you a question, uh, kind of a nuts and bolts thing since you guys are in a crazy market where, you know, a home on average in Sacramento, the same house might sell for how much more than it did last year? 50, yeah. 75, like, you know, yeah, 100 or, or 100 yeah. on, 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 you know, the 400 is now a 500 a year later, that kind of thing. Yeah. So when, um, what's your idea as far as like how bold to be when you go and paint this, this uh, vision for, here's what I think it would sell for because there's a certain degree of um, not being able to rely totally on the comps. So what's your tactic right now since we're in that situation? Well, I mean, I, I'm looking at houses. I mean, I send a CMA on homes that I sold to these people. So I know a general idea of like what the house used to look like. Right. You know, mm -hmm. and so I just do like the bare minimum of, of assuming that they didn't do any upgrades at all in the last mm -hmm. few years and just run the numbers based on that. So just trying to be a little bit conservative. Yeah. Um, but the, okay. you know, the market has increased so much. So there's still like, wow, numbers to present to them. Okay, right. So like, even though you and I know we might be able to push it a little bit north of that, we yeah. choose not to set an expectation we might not be able to deliver on. And at the end of the day, the client is still like, you know, surprised at the numbers. Okay, this is great. And All right, awesome. To get the conversation going, so. The other thing too that I touch on for if you don't have a ton of past clients, because like we moved to the Sacramento area just four years ago. So it's not like we walked into this massive database, but you can reach out to friends and family. Like mm -hmm. if you have agents on your team that are wanting to lead gen on their own, what they can do is they can reach out to just people they know and just, and they know where they live and just send them the information and do the same exact process. Like I was just curious looking up houses, I'm um, running comps and I wanted to see what your house is worth. I was shocked, thought you might be as well. Here it is. And then, um, Another thing you can do is say, we can get you a cash offer. So take me five pictures, the front, the back, the kitchen, and the bathrooms. Send me five photos and I can get you a cash offer in 24 hours. And then Send me five photos. Mm -hmm. Write that down, y'all. I mean, that's almost like a conversation you could have over text if they didn't answer. And they're like, hey, I'm in a meeting. What's up? Like, here's what's up. You know, here's where my head is at. Send me five photos. I can get you a cash offer tomorrow. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Who wrote networking mixers? And what is that about? That one's me. Johnny. <laughs> that sounds like no fun to me. So sell me on that one, Johnny. So I'm a, so I'm a, my personality profile is uh, DC. I'm a massive introvert and it doesn't sound like fun to me either, but there's this fellow, I'm sure nobody's, I'm sure nobody's heard of named Grant Cardone. And um, I don't know. I'll Google him. I'll Google, Google him. him. Yeah. If you yeah. haven't heard of him, check out Grant Cardone. <laughs> and he says, it doesn't matter who, you know, it matters who knows you that counts. And so um, I just heard that and I was rolling around my head and I heard about this mixer, networking mixer. How fun can those be? But everybody was talking about this thing that was at a local club here in Sacramento. I was like, that's a weird spot for a mixer. So I checked it out and this was right before COVID and over 500 people, like it was just packed in this like multi-level club of just um, lenders, vendors, real estate agents, title and escrow people. And then a lot of small business owners in the community as well. Um, just having a good time, hanging out, meeting people, like a totally non-threatening environment, but it was fun. I was like, oh my gosh, how do I do this? And so um, great time to start a, a, a mixer in the middle of the pandemic. And so we started a mixer and um, 
I made the mistake. So I, Brad, you made the point of these being free tactics. So I want to make sure my first one, I made a big mistake and I paid the venue because I was afraid nobody was going to show up. Okay. So the venue was free, but I paid for everybody to have two free drink tickets. Well, somehow two, somebody, two free drink tickets turned into a whole lot more than two because somebody got a hold of the tickets and then the well drinks ended up not being well drinks and it'd been a total cluster. Right. And it ended up cost me a lot of money. And I said, mm-hmm. nope, never again. The guy who was teaching me how to do these mixers said, you do not have to do that. I went against his advice. Yeah. And I did the drink tickets. And we had about 40 people showed up next month, same venue, no drink tickets. And uh, we had 60 people show up fast forward. So no impact on the attendance. People weren't showing up for the free drinks. They were showing right. up to network and meet people fast forward to um, the last time we held it. So now we're doing it every other month. Um, but it was, when was it gorgeous? February. I think yeah. it was the last one we held it in February. We had over, um, we had close to 400 people there. And it's just wow. turned into this. So it's not like a quick, like get, get a listing in May thing. But what the format is, is we go, it's Thursdays. You want to do them on Thursdays because typically venues are slower on Thursdays and you're bringing in people that they don't, wouldn't be having otherwise. You want to have like a, a covered patio area or like a, an area where you can meet that's away from the rest of the guests. So you're not irritating them. If you're not, what are we looking at? Like five to seven? Like what did you, what have you found as the best little window? So we do it five, we do it five to eight. And then if people want to stay later, they can stay later, but we do five to eight. So almost like a happy hour type of a thing. And what we do is we promote it as well. So we promote it throughout the community. So this restaurant or this venue is getting exposure that they wouldn't otherwise. And sometimes they'll throw in a DJ um, and they'll, they'll, you know, they'll, they'll provide some stuff as well. But basically if I'm bringing 50 people, let's just, just keep it small. If I'm bringing 50 people to a restaurant, and they're paying everything and they're paying, that's 50 paying customers that this restaurant's getting, you really shouldn't have to pay to bring 50 people to a restaurant. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah. And the most, I mean, the most that that costs us is really just time spent on advertising and marketing and maybe some balloons to set up. I mean, it's really right. a minimal thing. So, yeah. So, you know, how many of you uh, have read the book and are kind of interested in the brand ambassador program? And getting those dollars from vendors, maybe you're already gotten like a number a version 1.0 of your vendor program out the door. Like this is one of those things that you can also sell, guys. It's yeah. like a sponsorship to this thing, you know, where you go and defend the value of that monthly contribution. Like this can be one of your line items is that quarterly we have these mixers. And if you want to be the guy who's like got the big banner in the back, you know, home warranty company or title company or whatever, like this is one of the things that you pay for. And we need those physical things that they pay for to help us with the compliance aspect on a settlement service provider. This is awesome. Okay, so now like that doesn't sound like dreadful. The way that you're pitching it sounds like basically you show up, you handle the guests and then basically leave and it's done. You don't have to worry about it or cut a check. Let me ask you a question. Johnny is an introvert because I bet we've got some other introverts on the call. <laughs> you probably had to get really good really quickly at um, introducing yourself and asking for the referral, right? Uh, so, so tell me what, what's your script is somebody just, uh, um, I'm standing cause I'm one of those guys that like at those mixers, I just stand by the buffet table, you know, <laughs> like, just like, I'm just not that person. So tell me what, what would you come up to me and say? So I, I honestly, I wouldn't come up to you and say anything. I'd be standing there, but I'd be standing next to a lender or next to somebody who's super extroverted and super, um, like, you know, those people, when you walk into a room, you just can't help be friends with them. Like, That's just, Aisha. Yeah, right? like, like I, so I would stand next to Aisha and and just meet people as they're coming through, and then Aisha would say, "Oh my gosh, you got to work with John. Here, you're looking to buy a house," and she would make the introduction. Oh. And all of a sudden, it's like not me trying to sell myself. It's like, "Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Here's my business card. Yeah. I love the opportunity to work with you. Give me a call." You know, and then and then she's making the introduction. Wow, the, the barnacle. Yeah. The barnacle strategy. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm just gonna ride the coattails of my introverted buddy. Uh, I'm digging it. Okay. So you had something on there. Speaking of things that I didn't think sounded like a lot of fun, I want to highlight this one before we move on. And that is circle prospecting, in my view, has been really frustrating over the last few years. But you're telling me, hey, there's still a way to do this that delivers like dominoes. So tell me about this ultimate circle prospecting listing program and how to do this the right way, since most of us on this call have probably given up on that already. Yeah. So this was taught to me. I didn't, I didn't create this. I mean, nothing's new under the sun, but certainly not this. And, but what we do is a little bit different where as soon as a listing is coming on the market, depending on your coming soon rules in your state, like that may vary, but 
circle. So we use Red X. You can drop a pin and go out 200 um, houses. And so circle prospect 200 houses and say, hey, the basic script is something along the lines of, hey, I'm just calling. I'm, I'm Johnny with um, Made For More. Just want to introduce myself, let you know there's going to be more activity on your house. Um, we're going to be hosting open house this weekend if you'd love to pop by. Just wanted to, to give you an idea of why there might be more cars going through the neighborhood than normal. Um, mm -hmm. And that's it. Have a great day. And then you're not really selling, you're not pushing anything. And then um, as soon as the house goes pending, call the same 200 people. So you already have the list and say, hey, I, I called. This is Johnny with uh, Made For More. Called a couple of days ago, letting you know the house on the market. The sellers have already accepted an offer. Super strong, way above asking. I can't sure what it is just yet because it hasn't closed. Um, but I'll be definitely sure to give you a call back when it does. And you can also leave like a voicemail. If you're not, if you're getting a bunch of voicemails, you can just drop the same thing along voicemail. Yeah. And then on the third time, you you call and say, hey, good, great news. Your neighbor's house finally sold. It sold for X amount of dollars. What do you think about that price? Interesting. I like the fact that the tip of the spear is not a sell at all. It's a it's a heads up. Heads yeah. up. There's going to be a lot of traffic through there this weekend. Just wanted to make you aware. I'm not asking for anything at all. Wow. Okay, that's cool. And then um, before we get to the 911 stuff, uh, the uh, for 911 deals, you guys have one more, which is connecting with other agents in other markets via social media. So whose baby is this? Is this Johnny or this Valerie? This one's mine as well. Okay, tell us about it. What's your what's your deal here, and what does it produce? So this is something that kind of that kind of grew out of the pandemic. Um, we were just in our market. There were a lot of people moving from the Bay, from San Francisco area over to, um, to Sacramento. And I realized, okay, and I actually went to a, a Tom Ferry thing. It was Tom Ferry, Brian Buffini. And they were having this network and we were hearing about where all these people were moving. And I met a lady from the Bay. And she said that um, she, what she has done is she sells about 30 to $40 million a year in the Bay. So not a whole lot of houses, but it's a pretty decent production amount. And it's purely off agent referrals. And I said, well, how do you do that? And she said she figured out where people were coming from and moving into San Jose. And she just has um, agent partner referrals there. And what she did was she um, just went through Instagram and just started connecting with people, said, hey, my name's Johnny. Um, I'd, love to, I'd love to just take a couple minutes of your time, see if we're a good fit and see if we can share business back and forth. You have a conversation. If they're a good fit, you follow it up with, um, like you get their mailing address. And I think, I, I don't know if I did this to you, um, Brad or um, Sandy, but I send them a card and it's basically thanks a lot for taking the time to meet with me. You know, I really appreciate um, getting to know you a little bit. I look forward to working with you in the future. And you just send them a lottery ticket. So thanks a lot. All right. Okay. Um, just a forget me not. That's great. No, I will. But I will take a Powerball. Uh, if you, you feel so inclined, the California <laughs> jackpot or whatever you guys have out there. Okay, so uh, before Valerie uh, and Johnny share their a couple of tactics that they use to get 911 deals, oh my gosh, I got to put another couple of deals on the board um, uh, for May. Uh, what I want to do is I want to open it up for everyone to contribute in the chat box. So here's the rule. I want you, uh, everybody in the audience who feels so compelled, uh, to share one ninja thing that you do when you see that your pipeline's growing a little small and you want to boost it by another couple of sales next month. More wacky and con unconventional, the better. If you contribute something in the chat box, then you can also put your name and your phone number and your email in the market where you practice so that maybe we can get you some referrals as well. And one thing that we're going to do a little bit different whenever we send out the replay is that Adele is also going to send out the chat transcript. So everybody who um, contributes their contact information, this will actually live with the recording and everybody who registered for the, the um, webinar, even if they weren't able to make it live, will get your contact information where you practice and hopefully we can get you some nice referral deals. Okay, so Johnny, Valerie, who's, uh, I, I want to go to Valerie because I know no, Valerie's no, like, crushing the listing appointments so valerie talk to me about oh no we need another couple of deals for may what do we do what's your go-to it's go to the phone um and i tell i tell our new agents this as well but it's literally just start at a and go through your phone and call any and i tell people to call people that would want to hear from them so i do the same thing like i'm not just going to call some random realtor that I had from a couple of years ago that I saved in my phone. Like that person doesn't want to hear from me, right? There's no money there. 
Um, but I would call a friend from high school that I still had in my phone, just say, Hey, what are you doing? Um, I had this happen recently. And the friend, um, we had stayed connected on Instagram over the years, but we just said, uh, she lives in Wyoming. I thought I'm never going to do a deal with her. Uh, but she's actually coming back to the Sacramento area for more school to do her residency and, you know, may buy a house here. So, you know, it's one of those things where you never know until you ask. Um, but I think it, it creates that personal connection. If you just call people that actually want to hear from you and start there, um, start there in your phone, because that's where the gold and the money is. So if, if that's not supernatural, if that's not very natural for me, then the question that I'm asking myself right now is, but Valerie, like, what do I say to, you know, I'm thinking of my friend from, you know, my old job, you know, who I haven't talked to in a few years, who would love to hear from me. And also, how do I make that a productive call? What would you do if that were your scenario? Yeah, I mean, start out and, you know, Obviously, we're trying to to direct the call towards something productive, like you said, but really it's starting out with something that's not going to put them off guard, like, hey, I'm a realtor, let's yeah, let's right. do business together, you know, um, but ask them about their life and naturally they'll start to ask you about your life and say, oh, I'm in real estate. People always have so many questions about real estate and you can answer a couple of questions for them. Um, but then ultimately, i I mean, I'm not really a hard ass kind of a person. Um, yeah. I think that starting that relationship and giving them a little bit of information um, because you're, you're starting over. Sometimes these are people that you haven't spoken to in 10 years, you know, right. um, but there it's, it's a great way to uh, again, rekindle that relationship. And people will ask immediately if there's something that they need for real estate, they'll ask you right away. How many, we're going to go. Uh, this is awesome. This is gold, Valerie. Thank you. The, um, I'm going to go to the gallery view so I can see everybody. How many of you have been in the game for, let's say, more than four years? You have people who you sold homes to years ago who you are really dreading calling those people because you have not kept up. Isn't that the, the syndrome? How, I don't know how many CEO Masterclass folks have come through the program and will refuse to call the buyer from 2016 but then we'll go get their ass kicked by expired sellers day after day. It's like, what's the calculus? So what's the fear there? It's just like, oh, I, you know, they're, they're going to be mad at me because I like abandoned them or something. And the thing that I always tell you, tell my, our people is, you know, I don't mean to say this in a way that's ugly, but like, get over yourself. Like you know, those people never expected you necessarily to keep up with them every single month. Um, mm -hmm. It was only you who had that expectation and you only let yourself down. I, when I want to rekindle, when I had to go rekindle a database a few years ago, I just led with, I'm sorry, just be very yeah. assumptive. Like, Hey, listen, I've been building the team. I've been hiring these agents. I don't know if you've been following me on Facebook. It's been crazy. I've had a sticky note on my computer. This line works really well for me. I, uh, I've had a sticky note on my computer for like a year to give you a call. That's the state of affairs over here. You know, I've been meaning to check on you and make sure, you, do you guys need anything? Do you need like a flooring guy? What's going on over there? How are the kids? Like, that's the line that I would use as my entry point. Nobody's going to be mean to you if you say, I'm sorry. And it's a, it's a, 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 a kind of a natural way into an unnatural conversation. When I have baby agents who are brand new, who don't have any credibility in their sphere, and they are super nervous about, especially the younger ones, you know, the, the younger they are, the more kind of afraid they are to reach out to their sphere and ask for business. The first message that I send to them, if they're introverted and they're not confident, uh, the first message I have them send out is I have them go on Facebook Messenger and I have them send this message that says, hey, FYI, you probably noticed that I got into real estate. Um, and at some point I... Uh, want to be your go-to guy for real estate, but not yet. I don't want your referrals yet. What I want is I want to show you over the next few months that I'm a badass at this. And then I create really crazy, amazing results for my clients. And then in like six months, after you've seen me do it over and over and over again, I'm going to come back around and I'm going to ask you if I can be your go-to guy or go-to gal for your real estate needs and your real estate referrals. Would that be okay? Mm -hmm. So there's no ask coming out of the gate. There's no, there's no, awkwardness because I don't require anything of you right now. The, the tension is out of the room. 
every person on uh, in, on Facebook knows 10 realtors and they've gotten messages before about like, I'm a realtor now, who do you know? And then of course the ink is still wet on that person's license and they're not going to refer. So use that anti-sell for the people who are super introverted. This is gold, Johnny and Valerie, Sacramento, California. We put their information on the screen up there a little bit earlier. If you got referrals, make sure you send them to them. Thank you guys. They're so You're welcome. Smart. Aren't they right. adorable? Can I just throw one thing there, baby. What? So, so the script, so we just did this. We're onboarding agents all the time. And um, the exact profile that you just described, he's 22 years old. He was a physical trainer at the gym. I said, okay, day one, guys, call, call your database. And here's what you say. You just scroll through your phone. Hey, who, someone that you want to talk to that wants to hear from you and say, hey, I was literally scrolling through my contacts. So it can be in your CMA or it can be in your um, CRM or in your phone. I was scrolling through my contacts, came across your name. It's, I know it's been a long time. We haven't talked in forever. Like lean into it. Say, so I just want to give you a call and see how you're doing. What's new in your life? They invariably ask you how you're doing. And then, and I forgot one important thing, because for some people, this can turn into an hour long conversation and say, hey, I'm on my, I was scrolling through my phone. I'm on my way to my next appointment, though. I have about five minutes, but I just want to check in. It's been a long time. So then that gives you an out and the conversation starts dragging on longer than you want to. So you can get through your calls. So right. that way, so just preload it. But we had this, this, this kid do this. He got on his first call, his first call. He called some, an old gym buddy. He got a listing appointment. He got that listing. And then um, now he's got it in a contract and he got the neighbor's condo listing and it's in contract as well. Wow. So within the first call. So granted, that's a one in a million type of a situation, but that's instant money. That he's going to get paid on late April, early May. Yeah, and nothing makes you more confident about doing something than creating early, easy wins. So I bet he's not afraid of that phone today. That's nope. great. Awesome. All right. Thank you guys so much. You're amazing. I want to introduce you all to uh, a buddy of mine. This is my friend, Tyler. Everybody say hi to Tyler. Wave in a way that's really big and awkward. There you go. Hi, Tyler. <laughs> hey, everybody. Hey. So tell us, Tyler, um, who is Tyler? Um, full disclosure, I'm in our basement office now and the dogs are here. So if a doorbell rings, fine. if anything happens, you're, you're going to hear it. Um, so I am a team leader. It is myself, my husband, and then two buyer's agents. Cool. And we just started the team back in 2021. It's been one of those things that is, it's always been on my radar, but I've gone back and forth. Do I want a team? Do I want that re responsibility? Any of that? Um, so that's a really awful off-centered picture of me. Um, but so my, we run a team in the Charlotte, North Carolina area. We, one of our agents actually works that South Carolina area too, since we're so close to that border. And I mean, we knock it out of the park. We're homegrown, organically growing, looking for some lead generation sources. But as of now, we are sphere referral based. Um, just adopted three little monsters uh last year so we yeah. started a pandemic and adopted two kids we already had the one um so now we are we, we spent the last year trying to figure everybody out and here we are so happy to be here awesome so when i think about like um you know relationship based selling I, how many times have I hit you up on like Facebook or Instagram after you post something? I'm like, yeah. what the, it's been a what did you, what is you, what are you thinking? What is, what does this do? I've never seen know. some of the stuff that you do, but it works like crazy. <laughs> um, it does. So I tell everyone that we are not in, at least my, my team, we are not in the real estate business. We're in the relationship business and people want to do business with people that they know, trust, like, and feel like they have that, that relationship with. And we've just, we took off and we ran with it. <clears throat> Can I put some, we packed all your crazy ideas up on the oh screen God. here in one slot. I'll hit them all really, it, really quickly. It's, it's just such, they're so wild. And I've seen you execute beautifully. In fact, I've got a package or two in the mail from you yeah. um, because you are obviously a, a, a relationship master. Before we get into this really quickly, define your service area again. So it's Charlotte, North Carolina and also- Charlotte, North Carolina. And like, we have a couple border towns that are in South Carolina. So Rock Hill, Fort Mill, places like that. And what I'm learning about those places is that you, most people on the call have probably never heard of them, but as soon mm -hmm. as we're done, you will start to hear them now because so many people are moving there. Like yeah. it is, it, it, it wild. I, we've been here since 2012 and I don't think I've met anyone that is from here. People just flock here. So yeah. 
So as soon as I heard like Spartanburg, like I've never heard of this place before. And then now it's like every week I know somebody who's going to Spartanburg. So all you realtors on the call, make sure you record Tyler's information because he's going to have tons of stuff for you as far as referrals go. So let's go to all of Tyler's crazy gift giving ideas. Um, That looks like a lot. It looks like a lot. But tell me about some of your favorites on here. All right. So some of my most favorite. So what I've learned, and this was just hammered home to me as as a parent, um, that people love when you take extra extra time to pay attention to the kids. Um, so a lot of our gifting lately has been more geared towards kids um, because people just love that. Like we have, we're about to roll out our Easter baskets this year and it's just egg dyeing kit, like stuff you might've forgotten. Um, but one of the coolest Wait, show things- us that again. Show us that again. Oh, I don't want to breeze through there. Okay. All so right, so what this. is this? Okay. This is just going to my, my top 20, um, and it is – actually, I have one right here. It is just Easter egg dye peeps and then Easter grass, so that, be careful that shit gets everywhere. Um, sorry. So um, these are your ride or die, like, favorite clients? Yeah, be- these best are, like, referrals. if you are – yeah, so if you are currently under contract with us, if mm-hmm. we just sold you a house in 2022, 2021 – if you're ju- if you're on that cusp of needing to buy, needing to sell, you're gonna get an, an Easter basket. So yeah, and the stuff um, really is for the kids. It yeah, is the, yeah. the, the I mean, Easter dye Easter eggs. Them. Yeah, no, I'm for not gonna sure. Die eggs. Got um, it. But I, I'm gonna think about oh, what an intentional thought out gift that I can turn into like this Saturday afternoon thing. Right. So um, we do a lot of that, and then my favorite thing kid related is. <laughs> The Berenstein Bears book. Yeah, so they have like crushes. a book for everything, like learn their manners. It's Halloween, but they also have one that is called Moving Day. Do you have and, that? Do you have one in front of you? Uh, we we just moved, and I don't know where half of yeah, my yeah. stuff is. Um, but it's called Moving Day, one of the Berenstein Bears series. And yep. what's it about? How to move, like just what's what's going to happen, how you're going to pack up all your stuff, and it's going to come to the new house. And nothing makes a kid feel better than getting a piece of mail that has their name on it and then they open it and it's like this fun, fun book and parents eat that up. So totally 100%. Do that. Like, yeah. uh, I would love that. I would totally love that. It makes that little like kid related dopamine center in your brain just yeah. like explode. Somebody did something. Like good. Um, <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. So what is that setting you back about three or four bucks a book? Yeah. You can buy bulk for like 24 bucks on Amazon uh-huh. here the next day, slap it in like a, a manila folder envelope thing. Right. Off. So, okay. So that one delivers like dominoes. What, what, what are your other like favorites since we're running a little bit low on time yeah, here? I'll go really fast. Um, so we do closing gifts, but each closing gift is going to be a custom made something because I, when I first bought a house, I got like a bottle of wine yeah. and we, we drank it, totally forgot about the realtor, didn't know anything about her. And I thought, I don't ever want to be forgotten about. I would rather give you something that you're going to keep. So we do a lot of these guys. So it Cute. says the Row Fam, Home Sweet Home. So we do a lot of those. We do these really cool like custom coasters that are like the natural wood and the marble, whatever that trendy stuff is right now. Um, let me think birthday gifts are a huge deal for us we have we have a systematic approach to it like we will gift you on your birthday we won't miss it if, if we do miss it I, I feel awful i feel like i yeah. completely failed what but, do you use to stay on track uh, like is this automated at all yeah so crm my husband is an engineer by trade so he's got all of the brain power to send me a, a reminder that says, Hey, seven days out, you need to get a gift in. You need to okay. get a phone call in. You need, you need to get a social media post out all of that. Um, when we get a brand new buyer or a brand new seller, like as soon as I'm walking out of the door of a listing appointment and I'm in the car, I will send them cookies, crumble cookies. Like it's the new hot thing. Yeah, you right. can do it through their app. It delivers like within a, a few hours and people are like, Holy cow, this is Whoa. fantastic. So, so if the listing appointment is at two o'clock, I'm getting cookies tonight and it's a surprise. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Do you yeah. have to feel like, them out to make sure they're not like, you know, allergic to stuff? I mean, I don't, I don't, is there any I, logistics I about that or just no, throw a... No, I just throw it all out there and yeah, just cool. hope that it's not like a gluten-free sort of household. Yeah. 
And if it is, I'll know for the next time. So yeah, it's really yeah. just the, the thought. Um, we had a, a buyer that was relocating here, put them in a house here. They were still up in the DC area, got their offer accepted. And then we found an app called Drizzly. I've, yep. I've never heard the of li- it, but you the liquor delivery. You can sit out yep. yep. So we sent them a nice bottle of champagne. It showed up at their door. They were like, holy cow, how'd you guys pull that off so fast? And it's just ways to stand out like that. Everyone knows 10 to 15 different realtors and you've got to do something to stand out. And for us, sending gifts has been it. And we're not breaking the bank doing it either because I'm, I'm, I'm cheap and I have free labor in these, these kids. So there was an afternoon, we took all of these, these Easter baskets and everybody stuffed, everybody had a job. Yeah. Um, so um, what do you what do you see in terms of results from the average bear? So like, yeah. how does it manifest? Usually, it's a week after you send the birthday. Like, what what's the common thread as far as when the predictability of results? I guess common thread is hit or miss. Like timeline timeline wise, timeline wise. Uh-huh. I had someone I've never done a deal with them yet. I just met them through a referral from someone else. So as soon as I got the referral, I sent a gift to person that sent me the referral uh-huh. to make sure, Hey, I just want to let you know, I'm going to take excellent care of them. Thank you so much for thinking of us. But these, these people, <clears throat> excuse me, the husband had some major surgery, had to put the house hunt on, on hold. So what we did was we sent them a DoorDash gift card so that when he came home from surgery, the last thing that they needed to think about was what are we going to eat? And we've sent them the kid book and everything, but they referred me out to another buyer that is moving here. And it's someone she doesn't know really well, but this person was on like a a Google team meeting or or something like that and said, Hey, I'm actually moving to Charlotte. Do we know anybody there? And she said, yeah, Tyler, he's the guy. Like he is, he's who you need to speak with and she'll be here in like six days. Nice. So relatively quick. Um, but we also don't go at it for that quick win. We know it's a relationship business and relationships take time. Like any, any relationship I've ever rushed has usually not turned out. Yeah. So, so it sounds like I can't, uh, the timeline, we're not going to sweat, but uh, can't predict a timeline, but they don't not refer. My no, people don't, don't not refer. So yeah. this sounds, it, it, Say it. it sounds awful, but people, when you gift them in that way, they're going to feel an obligation to you because you took time out to think about them. As soon as they hear somebody thinking about real estate or the moment they want to know what's going on with their neighbor, they're going to reach out to you. Like I haven't walked into a listing appointment this year or last year and had to win it. Like that sounds so egotistical and I hate that I even said it, but people feel like they, they already know you, you've been in their life, you've built that relationship. So you're, you're a shoe hand. Is anybody else going to do the crumble cookie thing like today? Like literally today? Your VA could do that for you coming out of the so list my, appointment. My address is 244. Send them my oh, way. Yeah. Send me all the crumble cookies. You did send me brownies one time. So I feel I obligated did. to send you the <laughs> crumble cookies. Yeah. Obligation. Next time, send me like fat burners. Okay. Because we have, we have a Got it. I'm going to put that in your notes. Low fat carb burgers. kale treats um, Got it. that I won't eat. Okay. So very quickly. <laughs> If you had to, because this is all like, you know, this is, this is the, we're sowing, we're farming here. We're sowing seeds, yeah. right? Have you ever had the, 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 the moment where you look up and go, oh shit, I, you know, I don't have the deals on the board that I really want. What, what would yeah. be the proactive thing that you would do to nail it and make sure that we had two more next month? So I'm going to hit my top, top 50 list. Um, it's either going to be a phone call or. I'm going to go and, and door knock you. Um, another thing that we've been doing is like a couple other folks have mentioned, we've been doing those CMAs, sending them out, just kind of pu- pushing them out, not really thinking too much about it. Um, but I'll also go through my phone and I will shoot just, just a quick video. Hey, Mara, haven't seen you in forever. Just want to make sure everything's going good with you and Jim would love to catch up. Um, people love that because you, you take that extra step to send a video. It's just easy, easy stuff that usually works well. It puts your your name, your face, personality out there, and they're gonna think, well, shit, Susie down the block needs to sell. So, yeah. So, that's killer. Those would be oh, it. 
All right, cool, man. I'm, uh, our South Texas team owner is uh, really killer at that as well. Just like 30 seconds, been thinking about you, you know, like it's just yep. so odd. We just don't send videos. And so it stands out like a sore thumb. Okay, yep. cool, man. This is awesome. Tyler, thank you so much. So Tyler is a CEO masterclass graduate. Aisha's, uh, Aisha is a CEO masterclass graduate. Johnny and Valerie are CEO masterclass graduates. You know, that's kind of our one thing. We don't have like a big long-term coaching program because our focus is on helping people in our partnership model get this off the, off the ground. Um, but if you guys are uh, looking for some help in getting version 1.0 of your team out the door or getting the current version of your team fixed, like we talked about right now or talked about before, then I want to tell you about some stuff that we have going on. Uh, by the way, Tyler, Johnny, Valerie, and Aisha, if you don't mind, if you can go in the chat box and chat us just a little bit about your experience in the class, you know, just so we can kind of share like your unvarnished feedback, the uh, uh, good, bad, and the ugly. We, I can take it, all, all the feedback you got. Um, I also want to remind everybody on the call that if you put an idea in the chat box, make sure we have your market and we have your uh, contact information so that we can reach you because this... Um, this uh, chat transcript is something that I want to, to make a rich resource for you guys and create some referrals. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna tell you about CEO Masterclass really quickly. So this is the program that we designed for 90 days. It's very intense. There's a couple of folks like Chad who are in the program right now and they'll attest to the fact that, you know, don't get in this program if you just want to learn. I'm going to kick your ass a little bit and I'm going to hold you accountable for doing the things that are required to get this team model that I prescribe off of the ground. I told you, me and Chris are, are good at one thing. We know how to do it in our sleep. Um, and so if we say you need to do something like make a few recruiting calls or talk to brand ambassadors, we're going to give you the words and then we're going to expect you to do it because you owe it to yourself. So this is the way that people sort of bolt on our systems to help them uh, supercharge their team launch or their team rebuild, um, you know, for three months. So let me tell you a little bit about what comes in the program. So if you've taken the program before, you know, it was a series of six live webinars. What we've done is we've actually doubled the content that's in this program and we've restructured it. So we have the classes that you take at your own pace, but now we have 11 or 12 live webinars where we actually do implementation calls. And this is the thing where we talk about recruiting and we you know, have you do the text messages to the vendor partners and the text message to the recruits and all that stuff right there. So we make sure that that action is getting taken and we're not meeting every two weeks anymore, we meet every week. So this is very intentional, it is intense. We meet on Thursdays uh, and then you do your classwork in between, okay? So there's some flexibility as far as like what the pace is that you execute on all of that coursework, but the implementation stuff, the meetings every week, are compulsory, like get in there, let's throw elbows and let's get this thing off of the ground and let's do it the right way this time. So we've got new works, uh, new workbooks, new bonuses, tons of stuff that, that our marketing team has helped create basically extracted from my brain and Chris's brain and put it all in these like, uh, you know, online resources and PDF resources in addition to the 12 live implementation calls. So it is 12. Okay, so let me tell you how the classes break down so you'll know the areas of focus that we have. You know, this model is built on, on creating leaders that can, can run this business without you. Um, whether you're going to sell it for cash or whether you're going to hold it and keep it as a cash cow, one of the key ingredients is that you have to replace yourself with these, um, with these subject matter experts who can run these impact zones like operations, like the buy team, like the list team, like we talked about these people are difficult or impossible to cut a check for. It's just not a thing. They're not out there. Even in Tyler's market of Charlotte, North Carolina, I could count on one hand the number of people who would be qualified to lead a high value proposition team uh, model, even just the sales agents. They're just not out there in our industry because 99% of the shops are low value proposition uh, brokerages, you know, that the don't provide a lot to their agents and don't have to guard profitability. So the, the recruiting, that's all to say, recruiting agents is how we fill that top of funnel. Every leader that we have in the organization up until like last year when we had to go and find a director of lead generation has been someone who we home grew from buyer agent status, believe it or not. And they either tracked through leadership or they tracked through 
went from buyer agent to transaction coordinator and then transaction coordinator, TCTL team lead, and then operations manager, and now director of operations and then president. That was the track for a guy that I hired off of Craigslist. <laughs> he shouldn't have taken that interview. <laughs> like I could have been a killer or something. I met him at Chipotle, bought him a burrito because I take care of my people. He said yes to the, the uh, very early team model that we had. And um, I eventually became president of the company and now has opened up an investment arm company uh, for us as well. So like, these are the people like looking at these baby buyer agents who will hand you your retirement one day. I know that that seems very unlikely, but it's the truth. So we got to find out how to get more and better people. How do we fill that top of funnel? How do we find the winners that are in there? And how do we groom them so that they attract for leadership? Part of that discussion is creating a killer value proposition, articulating something in the marketplace that stands out in a lot in a marketplace that's filled with noise. How many of you uh, have brokerages that have moved into your cities in the last five to 10 years that are 100% commission brokerages and only charge a transaction fee? And they recruit by the hundreds, if not thousands. Yes. I'm not trying to build that because they're not very profitable. Um, but now you have to go up against those guys as well as the traditional model, uh, real estate companies. So, uh, you know, your KWs and your, all, you are positioned in a way where you basically are David and these folks are Goliath. And I'm going to teach you how to win in those interviews and win on those phone calls, even though you might be coming at this from a place of, I'm just a little bitty baby team lead. Who's ever, who's going to work, want to work for me? Nobody's ever heard of me. All of those limiting beliefs, they're all BS. And I'm going to teach you how to punch right through those. We're also going to have to create a financial model that is sustainable. You know, I had a, um, I have lots of stories about this, but when a team fails uh, and a team builder throws up their hands a couple of years later and says like, hey, team building sucks or I suck as a leader, it, 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 this thing didn't make any money. It always comes down to a couple of things. And one of those ingredients is a financial model that was never sustainable. And if they had taken an hour and, and the back of a napkin kind of modeled out what that was actually gonna look like, they would have known that that was never gonna make any money. So I'm gonna show you a financial model with budgeting tools, with actual splits that I'm recommending for you that will help carry you into profitability. If you decide to build something that is a little bit different than what we're going to do is we're going to tailor that for you. So I have my prescription that I recommend that you, you build out, but if you are hell bent on making some kind of a change based on your circumstances in your market or some other limitation, then let's tailor your commission model so that it makes sense long-term for you and you can still create profitability. Um, we're also gonna teach you how to build a lead generation machine with other people's money. That is your brand ambassador program. Some of you might already have some minor contributions coming in from a lender, 50-50 lead buys and stuff like that. I wanna burn all of that down and teach you how to get unrestricted funds that are in the four and five digits so that you can create massive numbers of leads for both your buyer and listing side, attract more and better recruits, and you know, springboard into a greater transaction volume and profitability. This was the secret sauce for us back in the day. We're gonna teach you the art of leadership as far as building the kind of high energy, self-sustaining culture that you want, the science of leadership as far as how to make sure that these people don't just have fun, but they actually do their KPIs and they do the things that are required to succeed without, uh, and install that account, uh, accountability into the organization without busting the culture. And then we're also gonna teach you how to hire the right people um, into these leadership roles that I'm talking about. How do you know when you're looking at your future by your agent team lead? What are the, the, the indicators that tell you? Hint, it's not your top performing salesperson. Nope, that is a terrible answer. Um, so FYI, we'll tell you what to look out for there. Uh, for ops, sales, et cetera. So, and then number uh, six, one of the things that we're gonna do is we look at the seven pillars of your business as we laid it out in the million dollar real estate team. And we're gonna go around those seven pillars and make some instant tweaks right there in class that you can go and install right into your business live and be able to increase profitability, increase your satisfaction with your business, make some tough choices. That's not all though, because we're gonna do some things when that's over. Um, well, we should talk about the implementation calls. I kind of alluded to this earlier. We meet every week. We're taking these six big impact zones and we're working them every week with homework, with Q and A, you know, pushing you guys past your, your, your places where you're getting stuck on brand ambassador recruiting or whatnot. There's nowhere to hide here. 
So if you are looking for a coaching program that will hold you accountable and that will create action with you, one of the things that I'm going to do is I'm going to, if you don't show up, I'm going to message you and say, hey, where are you? Like, you need to be on this call. Like, how do you continue to create momentum if you're not going to play all in? So if you want to be held accountable, this is it. If you want to be called out on some dysfunctional behavior or some bad decision making, like we do that live. So don't come here if you're not ready to actually create something that is viable and holds up to a little bit of criticism. So what else do you need? We're going to have all kinds of downloadable tools and templates for you. You know, how do you articulate your sales agent splits in a way that's friendly to the, the agent prospect? There's a template for that. How do you poison other brokers interviews with your recruits. I know how to do that by sending them with the right questions to ask that will totally ruin the presentation that that broker team leader is giving at the big box brokerage. They hate me. <laughs> like, no, I've actually heard. <laughs> they, they, they do not like it whenever our people who interview with us come over to them because they ask questions that completely shatter the sort of pom-pom wielding recruitment presentation that is the tight 45 minute uh, deal that the, the um, team lead gives over at the big box. We're gonna give recruiting scripts based on your personality, you know, uh, the financial model, the budgeting tools that you need, all of the interview collateral that you're gonna to want to have as far as putting these people through their paces, asking the right questions, finding out what their values are, determining their like professional trajectory, all of that stuff, easy peasy, right? <clears throat> and it's all pre-packed for you. What else do you need? Well, um, when we go into the brand ambassador program, we're going to teach you basically version 1.0, how do you get money right now? This is uh, when we talk about in the book, the early version of the uh, brand ambassador program is about getting immediate contributions and creating immediate results uh, in terms of brand impressions for your vendors. There's also a next version of this thing where you get to step out of the, uh, of the, the, the role of being sort of the hub of this wheel of producing all of these brand impressions and you let the group of, brand, of uh, brand ambassadors sort of feed each other. In the beginning, you're tap dancing, you know, singing for your supper. Within, within a year, we want this to be a big collaborative effort where people are paying to get into this group and you don't have to report every single month about brand impressions and all of that stuff, right? So when you go to that next phase, a year from now, we have another course that we helped to create. This was a, a partnership with Viral Marketing. Chris helped to create a 16 week course. You don't need to, to look into it now. You don't need to take this right now. Don't feel like overburdened with it. This is for once version 1.0 is off the ground and you wanna get really nerdy about turning that $3,000 a month contribution into a $10,000 a month contribution. These are the rocks that will get you there. So this second course is included as a bonus. That was the deal that we struck with Viral when Chris helped them to create the course. So when it's time for you to, to dive into that, that's what you're gonna do. We're gonna give you the brand, impress, uh, brand ambassador partner uh, presentation so that you have something to show what uh, you're giving to your vendor partners. You have a guide as far as what to charge them. We'll help you think through all of that stuff. And then we'll tell you who to go after. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> so Chris loves to do the first five people. For the first five people who sign up today, we're also gonna give you immediately the commission split financial models. We're gonna give you the discovery pass to Austin. That's what Johnny and Valerie just exercised when they came out and hung out for a day and ate some like mediocre food with us. Don't trust DoorDash, just don't. Just get up and go to the place you know and wait in line instead. So you're gonna come down and you're gonna hang out with us and we're gonna take your model and we're basically gonna try to poke holes in it. And we're gonna make some recommendations. Johnny, Valerie, was that helpful for you all? a couple of days ago when we did this for you it was painful i'm sure absolutely no it was it was they were hard conversations but they were conversations that we just i mean we were just debriefing last night going over the notes again and it's there's some painful mis changes that need to be made in our business but at the end of the day we're not doing this to you know to to, to have, for because it's easy we're doing this because yeah. it'll be hard and because it'll pay off and uh, we want a better future for our family and it doesn't do anything for me. For, for It doesn't do anything for you if I just go, hey, you guys are great. It's awesome. Keep going. No, no, no. I'm going to tell you that you're wrong. And you're going to tell me that I'm wrong. And then I'm going to show you why I'm right and show you why that just saved you a ton of money. We're also going to do a business audit when it's all over. So we've got some homework for you. More homework. Yay. 
when the course is over, you're going to get with Adele. And Adele is going to help you execute on some homework that is necessary for a sit down with myself, Chris and myself, depending on your needs. And we're going to go over ways for you to immediately improve your business, buy back a lot of time and, um, you know, create more satisfaction in your life. So we'll kind of leave that as a uh, hanging out there because I don't want to sort of spoil the homework. Um, so all of this stuff, this what's the discovery day, the audit is, is something that comes with the CEO masterclass. Chris always says he had two options when he went to create this course. First option was just like pack it as a recording and go as cheap as possible and just sell it to a lot of people, which is actually not in alignment with our goals. Um, I'll be very transparent. Our, our goal is that one out of 10 people are our numbers are this, out of 10 people who take CEO Masterclass, there is usually one team that we want to uh, invite to join our franchise network. That's where we actually get stuck in with them and install our systems into their businesses and help them grow really quickly. You can talk to some of those people if you want. Um, but so that's why we took the second option, which is it's a little bit more of an investment, but we get to have a much more personalized uh, experience. It's $497, three payments of $497. If for some reason, uh, within the first, I think it's is it seven days, 14 days, Adele, you'll have to tell me what the answer is there. If you think it sucks and you tell you, Brad, your, your stuff is terrible and you, I don't like your face, then all you have to do is email me, email Adele and tell me that it's not working out. And then you can uh, back out of the course. So that's the course. It is 14 days. Any reason, no reason at all, just cancel. I won't be too offended. You're cool. Move on down the road and decide that this is not what you want to build. Um, so is this, is this worth gambling a few minutes of your time to check out? That's the big question. Adele is going to post in the chat feature, since we're running long, a link to sign up if you're interested. I want to save a few minutes for Q&A while you guys are checking it out and asking Adele and myself your questions about the program. Um, who's got questions first about what we went over today? Who's been sitting on a burning question this whole webinar? And you want to ask myself or Chad, uh, or excuse me, or Johnny, or Valerie, or Aisha, or Tyler, since we've got them for a few more minutes. Yeah. Everybody's a 10 of 10 on this free lead thing. You don't have any questions. You got 10 deals closing next month and don't want to put another couple on the boards. We can go home, guys. We can go home. Who's got a question? Everybody's being shy. Okay, cool. So Adele has put some stuff in the chat box about checking out CEO Masterclass. If you have questions about that, Adele's your girl. And if um, you need to get connected with me, you can't as well. Uh, you know, I think that the message to leave with today, if there aren't any other questions, is, um, you know, don't be myopic. Don't, don't do this thing where you go, I hire a few agents, I give them some leads from Facebook or Google AdWords, and then it just solves itself, right? Like you kind of have to look at this as a matter of drilling multiple oil wells in your business. Internet leads, the formula there is if you give your buyer agents about 30 internet leads a month, as long as they are Google PPC leads or higher in quality, numbers will be different for Facebook then that's going to get them on track to doing basically a deal a month, okay? After that lead pond builds a little while and they, they can call Sally's leads because we fired her and we get the rest of those leads and put them in the pond, plus 30 new ones are you know, dumped into my bucket each month. That's gonna put me on track for a deal a month, but we want them on track for three or four. And so you're gonna have to help them drill these additional oil wells and you need some practical tactical stuff in your tool belt. Okay, so for those of you who are kind of fence sitting, uh, just a kind of a recap of what we're doing with CEO Masterclass. Here's all the stuff that you get. Here's how you sign up. There's a link in the chat box. And Adele is your person to contact if you have questions about how to build out this team model and how we can help you. Tyler, Johnny, Valerie, and Aisha, thank you so much. Can everybody give them a little digital round of applause here because there is some gold here. And I think that there were probably tens of thousands of dollars in new commission uh, created here because these people are going to R&D, rip off and duplicate what you guys shared with us because it was pure gold and go implement it into their markets. Thank you guys so much. You're awesome. Thanks everybody for showing up and we'll see you soon. All right, take care. Bye.
Thanks, Adele. You're amazing. Yeah, you are amazing, Adele. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome, everybody. <laughs> you too, Bye, y'all. <laughs> Bye. Mwah.